guess I'm in the, uh, what they call the anchor man position. <laughs> five, five. Do I have control of the screen yet? If I click this, does it go? Oh, look at there. Now I've got power too. That's good. <laughs> I'm Jeff. I, uh, I'm Jeff Mills, and one of the things you may not uh, know about me is that uh, I'm a preacher's kid. And uh, yeah, that's me actually on the right with the tie uh, and the tie clip. And, uh, <laughs> is that a pocket protector? <laughs> Yeah, no wonder I became an engineer. <laughs> yeah, Andy and I were kind of talking before, like, okay, yeah, so I got the pastors, and then they rounded out with the lawyer and the engineer. Sounds like some kind of bad joke. <laughs> yeah, two pastors, a lawyer, and an engineer walk into a bar. <laughs> so, you know, needless to say, uh, as a pastor's kid, uh, we moved a lot, especially in the Methodist church. I don't know what John Wesley did. I guess he's addicted to travel or something, but we moved a bunch. And uh, I don't know about you, but there's got to be, who's moved? Raise your hand if you've moved. Yeah, pretty much everybody. Isn't it a pain? There's got to be a better way, right? So I found this the other day, and I thought, this is the way to go. Just, you got you to gotta be able to. Um, that's just the one. Am I pushing this in the wrong direction? It's to the right. Yeah, okay. You know, just check it up on the wheels and roll out and you're good. That's what I think we should have done, but we did. So uh, I got used to being the new kid at school because of uh, moving a lot. And, uh, you know, nothing says outsider like big glasses and plaid. <laughs> I just. You know, um, and I pretty much, you know, I would have had a bigger confidence throughout my younger career as a kid if somebody had just come up to me and said, you know, Jeff, it's all right. Because really, you're just the precursor to the hipster movement. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had so much more confidence growing up. Um, so I... I would have remained, most certainly, remained an outsider in school uh, if it hadn't been for Ben. Uh, let me tell you about Ben. So Ben, he was an insider at our school. He was the funniest kid for like a 40 cornfield radius. I mean, he was just... <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about it is, he took one look at me and said, oh my God. This guy's gonna get eaten alive. <laughs> so he took pity on me and started inviting me and including me and, and you know introducing me to all of his friends. And over time, I became an insider in that group of friends. Amen. And eventually, I became uh, Ben became uh, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, funniest kid in the former quarter grade. And, and ultimately, he became my best man. Yeah. Uh, so here's the deal. We all know what it's like to be insiders, and we all know what it's like to be outsiders. Right. Mm. That's good. And without a doubt, we know which one we'd prefer. Yeah. Let's preach, man. And we would do anything to never have to feel like an outsider again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. And so, in point of fact, if you rewind the clock, every person on the planet was an outsider. And there was someone who came and put aside his insider status mm -hmm. in order to make us insiders. Yeah. Right. And when he did that, we got to be part of something much, much bigger than ourselves. So good. That was Jesus. That's what Jesus did. And his invitation to us, his inspiration to us is his whole mission was, I've included you. Now you include others. Wow. Yeah. wow. Preach, bro. 
That's so good, so good. So our outsiders are in every sphere of life. Thank you, Jesus. Our, we have family members at our table or at a distance who feel like they can't get a word in edgewise. They feel mm. alone. They feel no one's paying attention to them. We have, there are outsiders in our work context and they don't know if they can really say what's on their mind or contribute their ideas because they don't know if they're valued enough to really be heard. We have people in our churches who are afraid to share what they really believe because their perspectives are different and they don't want to be looked down upon. Real talk, bro. Come on. Hmm. So I just want to share three so things that I think make the most difference when it comes to including outsiders. Mm. The first one is humility, to let go of stereotypes. I lived and worked in Italy for a time, and my closest colleague pulled me into an embrace on my last day in the office when we had to move back. And he said, I thought I knew all about Americans, Jeff. But you helped me see, I didn't know about all of them. And so he had the humility to relinquish a stereotype of the typical American-centric, mm -hmm. egocentric personalities that would come and go into that office. And our, our interaction was completely different than that. And so you never know when that next interaction is gonna slice right through the stereotype. And so we have to have the humility to let go of those predefined notions of who people are. That's good, Jeff. So good. The second thing is courage. Courage to confront exclusion yeah. when it's happening. Yeah, yeah. I was in a meeting <laughs> where a talkative That's client good. of mine kept interrupting one of the softer spoken engineers. You might say, is there any such other than a soft spoken engineer? <laughs> <laughs> And I wanted to hear what the engineer had to say, so I politely but firmly requested the client to let the engineer finish, and he did. And it turned out to be a really important piece of information that we would have been missing in our decision had mm -hmm. that not come out. Right, wow. right. So I risked my insider status with that client in order to confront the exclusion that was happening right. so that that quieter person could belong to the group. Amen. Amen. And the last thing I want to share is use words that everyone can understand. Amen. We do this unintentionally many times. I'm the worship director at the Vineyard Church, Peoria. Shout out for Peoria. Peoria. <laughs> uh, and uh, during one rehearsal, the bass player and I were just geeking out about some, like, sweet passing tone on a second inversion of a subdominant chord. <laughs> yeah, we, we like music theory, okay. And our high schooler keyboardist at the time said, um, Mr. Mills, when you geek out on music theory like that, I feel lost. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. The rehearsal just froze. And I composed myself, and I said, you know what? You're right. I will keep that in mind and conduct our rehearsals with words that we can all follow. So good. Amen. So I challenge all of us to take the next step in using our insider status to include others to include and actively seek out the outsiders right next to us. May God grant us the humility to let go of stereotypes, the courage to confront exclusion when it's happening, and the ability to use words that everyone can understand. So, so good. So, so good.